Sticks is our Red Artist of the Week. All right. Well, first of all, in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, uh, how about you and your family? Everything uh, good with you guys? Yeah. Uh, my gal, Melissa, she's uh, she's a nurse um, at a hospital uh, here in Austin, Texas. And, uh, you know, we've had a few touchy moments. We've got our house separated. Both floors of the house are separated just in case she calls me and says, well, Lock yourself in. I've been exposed, and she has a couple times, and we've had to kind of put it into application. But uh, and she came out okay. In in both cases, she uh, had her PPE and washed her hands, did all the things that they've been trained, you know, to do in these situations, and she came out clean. So so far, so good. But um, it's uh, it's it's an interesting time. This is the longest I've ever been. I've been home for twenty years. I've generally been in the last. 18 years since uh, I've been in sticks, um, we have been on the road nearly, we started off over 200 days a year on the road and then kind of tried to back off the last three years. We're probably out about 150, 160 days a year. And um, yeah, here we, hey, this is, we, we just finished doing a record. Um, it's being, matter of fact, I'm supposed to have a copy of the uh, mixed and mastered record tomorrow or the next day, and um, I don't think I can give the title of it yet, because it's still, there's, it's a great title, <laughs> but it's, uh, I, it, if I wish I could, but um, there's a lot of, a lot of little layers to this thing, that it has to be done properly. We actually don't even know when it's going to be released, because we have to weigh in whatever the schematic is for, um, you know, Hopefully, having success of a record, putting it out at the proper time, there was always a science to this. And now with COVID and everything that's been going on, it changes changes everything. And um, so, kind of waiting to hear, hear about that. It's uh, I will say it's like 17 pieces of music. It's a pretty aggressive record, and it's uh, progressive as well. And but the big sticks harmonies are still intact, and a lot of odd time signatures for those musician buffs out there who. Um, we get into prog music, but but it's still it's still got the the, the hooks and the you know what sticks has kind of been known for. We're just trying to do something a little bit more exploratory and a little deeper, and uh, we're we're excited about it. Well, good sounds great, and uh, we'll uh, be looking forward to that. Now, besides uh, the uh, the record you've been working on, um, have you been releasing your 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 musical? you know, cravings in any other way, any at-home sessions, anything like that? I have. Um, I've been doing some sessions outside of sticks, just, you know, when I, I get calls from guys I know here in Austin, I've uh, been doing some sessions in this time off and well, welcoming it. But I, my studio, um, every year, I just keep adding to it and adding to it. So I'm at a point now where I can kind of go down there and I don't need an engineer and I pretty much sell... Um, I was just looking at the other the other day. I've got to kind of got too many guitars in, on stands in the room. I probably got thirty guitars on stands in the room. But it's kind of set up just so that if I need a particular sound or something, I can keep moving and keep uh, the one thing. I think most guys will tell you that are writers and um, and performers and and kind of self. Uh, engineering, you can really get bogged down by, by the technical side. If all of a sudden you've got a creative moment and, you know, this, this guitar isn't when it used to be pretty strong, this, you know, it's not getting the right sound, you've got to experiment, you don't have the right uh, sound for whatever keyboard, uh, you know, that you're trying, trying to uh, move forward with, it, it'll, it just slows the whole pot. And now, boom, all of a sudden, those little cool ideas that you've woke up with are starting to go away quickly. <laughs> so I've got my setup down here where I have a lot of fun. I can go down there and it's, it's, it's all good to go. I do still prefer working with an engineer, but in these times, um, it's something that I've kind of had to turn that corner and make it a little bit more, uh, and just be self-reliant on, on doing the engineering myself. And so, uh, 
I've been buying buying the stuff to make make that happen, and and uh, we're pretty much there now. Well, you know, how does that work now? When you're working on a new record, obviously not together uh, in the studio. I mean, uh, are you all doing your parts and then emailing parts back and forth? How does that work? Yeah, well, we we discussed this in great length. There is a new technology out there where we, we were able to do the drums. Um, Todd Zuckerman, who's kind of world-renowned drummer, he, he and I are the only ones that live in Austin. And his studio is really cool in that he's completely set up with multi, he's got like six or seven kits up at all times. And um, he is able to have his engineer remotely control and run his sound. It's all, it's all pre-miked. All his kits are totally pre-miked and, and good to go. And he can play and perform without anyone else being in the room. I, on the other hand, for my parts, I, I learned and wrote all, all the stuff that I needed to work on before uh, flying to Nashville, which, which is where Tommy Shaw lives. Tommy's got an awesome studio on the bottom floor of his, his um, you know, kind of, basically, he lives in a compound. It's awesome. And um, so we would come in, and they'd shoot me in the forehead to take my uh, temperature. We all worked with masks, even though we're buddies and have spent more time with each other, our own families. We, you know, respected the fact that we don't, you never know where and somebody's been or, and had to totally abide by the rules that we felt anyway. And uh, we came out ahead. I, I, had a, I had a mask on, and plus I had a, uh, a face shield both on the plane both ways to Nashville. Um, I paid extra to get on early to, so I could choose a seat that was fairly isolated. And, um, we, you know, we, we kind of played by the rules. And uh, out of this, we came up with a really good, good record. Everyone else flew in just like I did, but except for the drums. And once the drums were down, of course, Todd and I have now – actually, I've been working with Todd longer than I've been in Sticks because he and I met doing sessions in Los Angeles. So Todd and I have a it's, – it's kind of a, a luxury that uh, I've, I, I've never had – this extensively, I've had really great drummers I've worked with, and there's that special solidity that needs to be there for a successful record of any kind between the drummer and the bass player. So um, the fact that Todd and I uh, already had developed that before I even came into Sticks um, has been really, really just, as I said before, a luxury. Um, and so when I went in to do the tracks, I really... I know what Todd's doing kind of instinctively, and I, I've, I write my parts accordingly to kind of the way he plays, which is, um, for those drummers out there who are aware of, I mean, it's pretty, he's, he's phenomenal. There's probably nothing he can't really do. Um, and it takes, takes your playing, my playing, in this case, to uh, a higher level because it, you know it's going to work. You just, you just know... If you got something that's a little twisted, his time is going to be so good, and he's going to be leaning with great feel to anything that you want, kind of want to go out on the limb a little bit and try something a little aggressive or progressive. Um, it's more more than likely going to work. And uh, everybody else, once we're done, kind of starts putting all the sugar coating on top. Um, JY flew down. We're kind of a crazy band because we're spread all over the place. JY is the only one that still lives in Chicago, which is where Sticks came from initially. And um, Tommy Shaw's in Nashville. Lawrence um, is in Toronto, Canada, which is where they discovered Lawrence uh, 26, 7 years ago. And um, we just somehow make it work. We're all, as I said before, we're together more often than we are with our families generally most years. And... Uh, it's just it's a brotherhood that that is pretty deep and um, uh, we it, it, you know it's kind of almost like being on and there's a couple guys in the band that probably could be on Saturday Night Live and do quite well. Uh, we we have a lot of fun and it's a lot of jokes as serious as it can get trying to create the music. Once that's done, we have a blast. 
Well, it certainly shows, too, uh, the, the show that you did here in Reading in 2018 uh, while the car fire thing was going on. Uh, right. It certainly showed on stage. I mean, you guys genuinely looked like you were having fun. I know it's a job, but it looked like you guys were having a blast, just jamming. Every night's a little different. We, you know, you get, we try to change the setup. We have quite a few records to choose from. So as soon as we get a little stale, there's a few songs we've got to play. Of course, you've got to play Come Stale Away, and you've got to play Renegade, and Too Much Time in My Hands. And uh, there's probably 10 songs that are pr- pretty much required. Uh, otherwise, people are going to feel like they're cheated, because one of those songs is going to be their favorite song. But then we try to go deeper into the catalog, and we get to change that up every now and again. And um, we also, we our, our production manager always keeps track of whatever our set list is. So if we come back next year and play your town, we know what we did last time. So we interject things that we, you know, something new. And so that you don't feel like you're seeing the same show every time. And um, so that makes it more fun for us because it, it doesn't become stale. And even those songs that um, are, are must-haves, we we somehow are able to sort of interject our personality that night and what's going on and how we're feeling, even though it's the same song. Um, it's there's certain ways that, that kind of you can make it special, and I think there's always little parts in songs where we stretch or you can kind of give a little bit of your personality, in it. and it changes from night to night who really shines in those moments. So um, it stays fresh. Well, speaking of being on stage and touring, um, you know, assuming and hoping that this uh, pandemic is going to uh, calm down next year, do you have any rock solid plans right now of of uh, maybe getting back out on the road? And if so, where? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, rock solid, definitely no, because there's too much there's too much uh, involved with the unknown of you know, with everyone everywhere in this country right now and, and actually every country around the world, really. So I doubt that there would be any European travel that I think was planned for next year, but we we do have dates that have been um, postponed until next year. There's a lot a lot of dates. I think we've canceled already 80, 90 shows already this year that we, we couldn't do. And um, it is... What they've kind of agreed to do is they'll postpone it and keep the fingers crossed that, that we'll come back and, and do, keep those dates. But everything is subject to change, just following what we're, you know, whatever protocol ends up leading everyone. And uh, I mean, I have people who are in events business who do breast cancer walks and um, AIDS drives and, and whatever it is. And um, everybody in the this industry which covers not just music, but all, all of the entertainment businesses and um, people who travel to and, and put on events uh, to, you know, as, as their business and, and the infrastructure that has uh, been in place for years is, is out the window. So um, everybody's kind of reinventing, trying to see how we can do this. Everybody's got ideas. Uh, some of them are, Worse than others, <laughs> but we're we're trying to figure out how to do do it safely. And and as soon as uh, I think they they well, there's there's a lot of projections. With all of a sudden, it starts to get political, which I can't stand and I hate talking about. So I try to keep it real. Um, but it really does come down to what happens um, in the next. Um, I'm not. I don't even know what the timeline would be, but. Uh, there are more question marks than any any answers I can give, but we're ready at a moment's notice. As soon as that time comes where we can all get back back together, I mean, it's it's awesome that the NFL and you know football, baseball, hockey. I'm glad glad we're still be able able to watch that, even though we've got the mask cutouts that we're seeing for the audience and the sound effects. It's still enjoyable, and if we can figure out a way to actually replace those cutouts with y'all, you know, it'll be a great day. Yeah, it will be a great day. And it's just uh, kind of ironic in a way where, uh, you know, sports has always been uh, kind of our uh, 
kind of a, a relief point for us in this time that we really, really needed relief from the real world where sports was canceled. And it, I think it really took a toll on a lot of people. Now, hopefully, I think in the uh, in baseball, in the uh, uh, championship series, in the World Series, I believe they're going to allow uh, some fans into the stands. Uh, so we'll mm. see how that well, goes. So, yeah, let's see how that goes. I mean, it's, I can definitely see they're, they're coming up with things. Um, a friend of mine who's in, out of Minneapolis, he came up with a, a booth that you can walk in and you get your... Uh, I don't know if it's the temperature or, or what it is, but it gauges. It's the kind of you walk through this booth as you come into, and you know you're, you have to exit out the side of, of the thing if if you don't pass. But they're they're trying to come up with things and ways where they can test people and then um, space them as well. And and there's enough people working on this that I think in time, and it may be the way things are for quite some time. Um, but let's just hope they. They get that going because I don't. There's a lot of competition, which is good, because that'll probably get us there faster. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, before I forget, uh, belated happy birthday to you yesterday, right? <laughs> Thanks, man. That was shocking, man. I got. I think it's because everybody's home. I got more, more uh, fan mail and and uh, good good wishes, uh, birthday wishes than I think I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it was it was it was hysterical. I mean, it, was, it could it, it touches you, you know, when when that happens because you know about I don't know one hundredth of the people, but there's people out there that actually know what you're doing. Is is you know it, it's humbling. So I, I thank you very much. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, okay, so it's still uh, you know fairly early in the day. Just uh, you know, real quick, uh, j- just give us an idea of uh, what today holds for you. What what are you up to today? Nah, some pretty boring stuff. I've uh, I've been downloading a lot of uh, uh, sounds, uh, or- orchestral sounds, actually, uh, on something called Miroslav, which is um, I, I'm trying to do some orchestrations with some of the music I'm writing right now, and so uh, I wanted to have really nice, you know, symphony orchestras from Vienna and blah 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 blah. So I'm downloading a lot of that. Um, I am gonna get up. Melissa wants me to go do a little bit of shopping, which it's not my favorite thing to do, but <laughs> I'm, I've agreed. I've agreed to do a couple things there. Plus, I have to get some uh, uh, some uh, these little receivers so I can. Uh, my studio is is down downstairs and kind of tucked away. I live outside of uh, Austin, actually, out on Lake Travis, and um, in the hill country out here, we get a lot of signal gets blocked, and I'm I've had to, had to tear, tear down half my studio two days ago. Bring it upstairs, reset it up. So that I could download these big, huge files that I'm getting. It's like, I don't know, 45 gig of of uh, violin sounds and things like that. So um, that's you know, it's boring stuff to to everybody. But that's kind of what I've been doing the last few days. And but the fun part is when it's done uh, using that and creating is is you know, I, I, hours go by and Melissa will have to like tell me, come on, you know, it's midnight. Let's go. Come on upstairs. Let's eat. Uh, good for you, man. Well, it certainly sounds like, uh, you know, my initial question was, how are you feeding that uh, musical craving? It sounds like you're, uh, you and the whole band actually uh, are doing a great job of that. And we're certainly looking forward to the new record. And, and again, you have no idea of a release date? No, not yet. Uh, I it just, like I said, there was, there's a way and a timing with every back in the day. It used to be if you if you were a big band like say Journey and Sticks and I don't know Cheap Trick and uh, Ario Speedwagon. Everybody tried to do the Christmas release because there's a lot of sales there. For but if you're a up and coming band, that would that was the kiss of death because you were going to get crushed by all those other bands and you try to come out maybe at the beginning of the summer, sometimes the first quarter of the year. But there's a whole schematic and a, and a sensible way of doing that depending on where you are in that pecking order to have a successful record and um, get the airplay and enough time for people to go, go to people like you and pitch their, their, their wares. And um, so I think they're trying to figure that out. What does that mean now? We've got a great record. We don't want to just re- release it at a time when uh, certainly when the, in the middle of an election, you wouldn't do it, but there's other things as well uh, that would take precedence over people listening to some new music. And um, 
So it's it's tough to answer that. We're we're trying to figure it out ourselves. Well, Ricky, uh, man, I appreciate the time. Appreciate it very much. And uh, let's hope for a better 2021. And let's hope that that you guys uh, sticks and uh, and all of us can get out in 2021 and do what we love to do. All right. Well, hey, thank you so much, David. It's great, uh, great chatting with you and uh, all my Reading peeps out there. Uh, man, I miss Reading. Reading's a blast. Reading's such a, a deep part of who I am and, and uh, how I probably was even given the opportunities to um, explore music and take it to a level where I could even compete in this crazy world. Um, it's... it's uh, I've got a buddy of mine, I should say, before I sign up, Steve Gunner. He and I grew up together when we were 10 years old. His last name, Gunner and Phillips, so we were gun lips when we were 10 years old. And uh, he ended up with Creedence Clearwater up until they they split up. Uh, well, he didn't split up. It was kind of the end of end. They were doing their last shows just before COVID hit, so that was well-timed. But 25 or 6 or 7 years that he was a Creedence, um, the two of us, to come from a, sort of the same same little we went we met at Cypress School and uh in the uh in the fourth grade and to both of us to have done well and have so many dear friends that we still keep in touch with in Reading, it's a big part of both of our lives. Well, everybody here in Reading, we are all big fans of you. We're big fans of sticks and um and uh, look forward to maybe seeing you here again uh, sometime in the uh, sometime in the future. That'd be great. You know, we just let's hope so, Dave. Absolutely. You know, we just went through another big fire, um, Zog fire out in the Igo Ono area. It's now ninety percent contained, but um, it's kind of weird. I'm here talking to you again, and uh, yeah. uh, under smoky, hazy skies once again. Yeah, man. I'm, I've been I've been hearing from my my buds up there that you know it's back and. Um, man, I thought that that sweep that went down Chico and in, in Paradise. I thought maybe good. Hopefully, it spies us twenty years. But here we are again. But uh, you know, my my sympathies go out with it to everybody there that's, that's going through this thing again. And and man, I mean, I just hope they figure out what we have to do to prevent this. I don't know what that would be as of yet. But um, hang in there, guys. We are definitely on, you know, definitely on, on our minds, and uh, we've talked about it several times. And so um, just all the best to everybody. Do the best you can. All right. Thanks, Ricky, so much.